Welcome to the Dream Big, My Friend podcast, where you will find all the inspiration you need to begin living a more intentional life today. Because no matter where you are right now in life, it's never too late to dream big, my friend. And now here's your host, Francis Vitakovic. Hey, before we jump into today's episode, did you know that I've created just for you a massive collection of freebies that includes my Do Something book. It's a no BS guide for anyone who wants to stop wasting their time today. There's also the Fabulous Day Cheat Sheet, the 25 Ways to Make Your Life Instantly Better Guide. I've also included a 12-month habit tracker template, the Abundant Mindset Guide. There's also the fantastic Your Future Self Workbook. It's a workbook designed to bring your future self to life. And finally, the Vent and Move On Workbook. It's a workbook I designed to help you resolve any issue. Right now, all these freebies are sitting inside my secret library, which you can sign up and access for your dreambigmyfriend.com forward slash freebie. That's forward slash freebies. There is honestly so much goodness there. Now it's time to dive into today's episode. Hello, my friends. This is Frances Vitakovic, and you're listening to the Dream Big My Friend podcast. This episode today is a very impromptu one. It came as I was driving home today, so I took my dogs to the dog park like I do every single morning. I let them have a run around. My Doberman definitely needs that run. And when I was driving home, I heard the two hosts, so I was listening to Kiss FM. If you're in Sydney, Australia, you know exactly who I'm speaking about, Carl and Jackie O. They must have pulled out their old school report cards and they were having almost a little bit of a giggle about the report cards, what they said, how their teachers used to like chastise them for being too chatty, for not taking school seriously, for always talking, gossiping and probably distracting their schoolmates. Now, the reason why I really paid attention when I was listening to this episode because it reminded me of this article that I published a while ago and it was all about While report cards aren't the be all and end all in life, it was a really popular blog post I wrote where I actually went and I dug out my old report cards from when I was young. And even though I would say I was a really good student, the report cards sometimes said otherwise. Anyway, I thought it would be really interesting and fun to go back and revisit that old article I wrote. And it stemmed from this thing that my son once said to me. So he was in year five at the time. And he's a really smart, bright kid, and he must have just not been taking school seriously because I think he came back with some grades and the teacher said, like, you you can do so much better. And yes, that's true because he ended up in the Newman class when he got to high school, which is almost like the gifted and talented program. But back in primary school, I don't think that his grades ever reflected his true intelligence. And that's probably the case for many kids who go through school. They're so much smarter often than the report cards indicate. So Jake said to me at the time, seriously, who is going to ask to see my year five report card when I'm adult? That is what he said to me. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, like he's so right, but I have a point to make. Like he's still supposed to take school seriously. But when he said that, it actually made me stop and think for a moment. And I went back and I pulled out my old school report cards. And here I'm going to share with you all the things that I found in those report cards that sort of like really surprised me. And if anything, they were actually really funny. So let me just dive in. So let's stop and ask for a second, how important are your report cards like in the end? And if your child has come home with another, you know, not so impressive report card, like are you feeling tempted to be really annoyed at that your child for not taking school seriously? Do you expect more from your child or do you feel like those report cards are a real indication of their true intelligence? So growing up, my parents would have said that I was a pretty well-behaved, really sweet kid who pretty much did whatever I was told. I was the eldest of three girls. So I was the one that sort of like had to pave that road ahead for them. Like I never really rebelled in any crazy way. I was polite, respectful, and eventually became this same normal member of society. You're listening to me today. So I'm assuming that you guys just know that very typical normal human being. And if I had to describe myself like today, right now, I would say that the three words I would choose is positive, motivated, and definitely open-minded. As for my youngest child, Jake, who, remember, he said those words, who's really going to care about my year five report card when I'm an adult, I'd probably use the following adjectives, laid back, confident, and funny. Now, I have to say that 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 laid back part of his personality sometimes that irks me a lot because he's probably a little bit like my husband, like he doesn't stress, he takes each day as it comes, he's probably carefree to a fault. And when it comes to his schoolwork, at least back in primary school, that's in Sydney, that's from kindergarten up until year six, he always had this attitude, oh, everything is going to be okay. Because like, despite his intelligence, he never really pushed himself too hard to work. He's actually probably still like that. 
And his teachers often noted in those early years that he didn't always work to his potential. Now, his sister's probably the complete opposite. Like, she works hard. She aims to get good grades. She doesn't really need to be reminded to do her homework or to hand in those assignments. Like, she has that discipline side where she just gets things done. Whereas my son definitely likes to leave things to last minute. He'll only pull out a school book after probably I've had to point out to him, like, many times you need to do this. And at age 10, which is when I wrote this article, He probably thinks that the best thing about going to school is just hanging out with your friends and as if life is just this long holiday. So the day before I wrote this particular article, I had a meeting with his fifth grade teacher. She was the most fabulous teacher ever. And we were like having this meeting discuss, well, how are we going to encourage him to work a little harder? Because he's like an A grade student who's just happy to receive B's and C's in his report card. And we wanted to work out how we could motivate him to push himself harder instead of just like doing the bare minimum. Like if you were to ask, if you asked him to do a book report, of one to three pages, you can just assume you'd be doing one because it's like you only really need one to three. And I remember it was actually during this meeting that he really bluntly said, but seriously, who's going to ask to see my year five report card when I'm an adult? And that was when it hit me. Like he was definitely right. Like A plus was stating what most parents tend to forget when we're parenting young kids. The long-term significance of those primary school report cards, like the ones like when those early years are definitely not as important as we think they are. Now, how do I know that this is right? Well, I can only use myself as a case study. And so that was when I went and pulled out my old school report cards. Now, even though my parents described me as an obedient kid, it seems like the memory of our past can sometimes be quite warped over time. Because the truth is, even though I did excel in my later years, like at high school and university, I myself wasn't this perfect motivated angel that my parents assumed I was like back in primary school. I actually personally remember like really enjoying year five. I was, I had this great group of friends. Like we'd read Sweet Valley High books. I think it was still Sweet Dreams books. And pretending that life was this wonderful adventure. Like it was so good to have that innocence of your childhood back in those early years. And the purpose of my life back then when I was in those years was definitely just to have fun. And if it wasn't fun, I didn't really particularly care to do it. So thankfully, my year four report card was kind. So I'm going to share with you the exact words that my year four teacher shared. He wrote, a popular girl with a pleasant personality. Frances is always tidy, neat, and well-organized with her work. She's dependable in all her class activities. She's a keen project worker and possesses a sense of responsibility. She does her best in class. And then I hit year five, which from memory was a lot of fun, but I don't think that teachers grade you on how much fun you're having at school. But this is what the year five, like my, you get two report cards, one in the middle of a year, one at the end. In that first half of the year, my teacher wrote, Frances is not working to the best of her ability. She puts too little effort into most of her work. Frances is unsettled in class and does not like to be given directions. She could be doing much better. Oh, Okay. Now, at the end of the year, I got another report card and it wasn't actually that much better. The next one said, and I actually cannot believe that I'm even reading this out, it says, Frances is often unwilling to conform to school rules. She likes to do exactly what pleases her. In her schoolwork, Frances is now making more of an effort. Her results show improvement. I hope that next year, Frances will become a more involved member of a class. Now, anyone reading those two report cards from year five might assume that I'm going to grow up to be this delinquent definitely not the case. And by year six, I had already changed my tune because I have this other report card that says, Frances is an intelligent and capable student with commendable qualities of leadership and application. She's worked well all year and I'm sure she's going to achieve success in high school. Now I have to confess, like I didn't get straight A's all through high school. Most of the time it was like B's littered with a few A's. It was enough to make me happy. I remember getting a D in music because music was definitely not my thing. And my parents didn't even particularly care because, you know, even though I had great academic potential, they didn't worry about that D that I got in music. And it was only during the later years of high school that something finally sparked to me. And I became a student like it was almost like I found that inner motivation determined to do my best. But what this means is that those individual report cards don't accurately predict a child's future. You can have a report card that indicates how well a child has studied for an exam or memorized facts. But they don't grade anyone on their resilience, their confidence, compassion, or happiness levels. You can have a child who's really blasé about their schooling for now and then later on goes on to become this incredible entrepreneur. Your child might not actually even discover what they're passionate about till after they finish high school. And maybe they won't even find their thing until years later. And when they do find it, chances are they're going to change their mind a few times. There was certainly no indication in high school that I was going to be this dedicated author in the future. I don't think it was indicative in my English marks or that I was going to create courses or have these websites. So research also shows that the vast majority of jobs that our young children will eventually work in haven't even been created yet. And that is so true. Like there was no such thing as internet when I was in high school. So the next time your child comes home with a less than impressive report card, 
just resist the urge to feel or like tell your child or feel this yourself that that piece of paper is going to ultimately determine their success in life. So just stop and think for a moment. Did your own report cards accurately reflect your level of success, success that you had in life? Did you score straight A's and B, but now you may be working a mediocre job? Alternatively, did your report cards indicate that you're never going to actually achieve much in life? Like if you looked at these report cards and you went out and you proved everyone wrong. Now, as parents, we worry so much about providing our children with all the right opportunities. We place these expectations on their shoulders that they should go well in school. Because ultimately, we think that this great report card is going to equal success and happiness. But does it really? Like, does it really, really equal success and happiness? Our children are just humans like us. Sometimes they feel motivated to work hard. Other times, not so much. And that doesn't mean that when they become adults, they're not going to find their own feet, find their own path. It doesn't mean that they won't grow up and discover something that they love to do, something that doesn't even exist right now, something that makes them want to jump out of bed in the morning and light a fire in their heart and soul. And I really do think that sometimes it's more important to raise a child to be kind and respectful and to find joy in the simple things in life. So when I keep these thoughts in mind, I know that my kids are going to grow up to be just fine as adults, no matter what their report cards say, because while we're busy trying to teach our children all about life, our children are at the same time teaching us what life is about. And here is the thing, like I have raised kids that are confident, resilient, kind, and forgiving. Like my kids have a great sense of humor. They're generous, not materialistic and selfish. And if the purpose of life is to be happy, then it looks like they're already on the right track. Now, of course, there's a good chance that my kids might sometimes come home with B's and C's in the future, even if they have the potential to achieve straight A's. But don't we all have the same potential to do better? Some of us just blossom in our own time, and that is okay. And I'm actually totally okay with that now. And if I'm ever not fine with it, then I've got to remember that I myself grew up to be a very productive, caring, compassionate member of society. Even though my grade two teacher did not always think that I would turn out that way. So I'm going to share with you before I end this episode what she wrote. It is hilarious. She wrote, back when I was in year two, Frances is polite at all times. However, she's often quietly disobedient and insists on doing what she wants to do regardless of instructions. How funny. Anyway, I would encourage you to probably dig out your own report cards, see how you went. Just it's always good to have that step back in time. Remember that, yes, education is important like it is. I don't want to like understate that value of learning and knowledge, etc. because it is like part of growing as a human is always learning and growing in life. Sometimes we don't always find our mojo when we're in high school. It doesn't mean that you're not going to find it later on in life. Sometimes you go kids go well in school and they struggle in different areas like that aren't academic. But I just think that it's really important to have a healthy perspective when these grades come back home, these report cards. Do not stress, do not think that these grades are indicative of some terrible future ahead. Going back to the reason I recorded this episode is that I listened to two people who probably are earning millions each year now running this incredible radio show, listening to their own report cards, terrible things said by their teachers, always talking, not paying attention, not respecting education. And yet they went on to chase their dreams and have these amazing careers. So your child will eventually find their own way if as long as you encourage them to do so, follow their heart, trust their instinct, and at the very least, just try their best. That's all you can ask for them. Just try their best. And what is their best might not look like your best, but that's okay. You had your chance to go through primary school and high school, and now this is their chance and their picture and their journey and the way that they live their life may look a little bit different from yours, but that's okay. That's normal because their life is going to be different from yours. But all you can do as a parent is just show up in the way that you want to show up. How do you want to show up when they come home with a report card they're not so happy with? How can you support them? How can you love them unconditionally? And how can you be there for them? So I do hope this has been a helpful episode for at least one parent out there that listens and goes, okay, thank you. Like, thank you for putting my mind at ease. Thank you for like encouraging me not to stress because there's nothing to stress about. As always, I love and appreciate you all. And I can't wait to catch you in the next episode. Until then, dream big, my friend. Thank you so much for listening. If you loved this episode, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out. And if you really loved it, you can show your support by leaving a review on iTunes. For more inspiration, head over to dreambigmyfriend.com where you will find even more content for all the dreamers out there. Until next time, dream big, my friend.